YouTubers and welcome back to another episode of uh, Random Links. Today I got a real treat for you. For those uh, uh, wood freaks, we're going to take a look inside a real working dry kiln. Now keep in mind this kiln is probably 60 or 70 years old, but um, the overall design and shape inside the kiln hasn't changed since their inception way back when. Uh, there's been some minor improvements as far as efficiency of the fans goes, but the overall setup with the, the charge moving in on a cart, the air circulating up and over and through the, through the stack, being heated by steam, that has pretty much remained a constant for the last, well, probably 100 years or so, or however long that uh, dry kilns have been in operation. Now, there's... Um, a lot of different ways you can heat uh, a dry kiln. There's, uh, of course, this one here is going to, uh, I'll show you, is uh, going to be heated with steam. Then there's uh, some that are done with uh, like a refrigeration type uh, where they actually um, heat the kiln with um, the heat drawn from the atmosphere, you know, by a, 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 an HVAC unit. Then there's also um, some, uh, what do you call them? There's freeze dry units as well uh, that use sublimation as uh, one of their drying methods. Those, are, however, are small batches and uh, usually don't uh, have, they're, they're not real efficient. Then there's other types of vacuum uh, kilns where you got a big kettle kind of thing where you draw, you know run the charge in, and you're not using temperature so much as vacuum to evaporate the wood. Um, and that too uses a, a type of sublimation. And then there's uh, high frequency drying, which is a, sort of a microwave. But like I said, for today we're going to take a look at uh, a steam, an old steam kiln and uh, see how they're set up inside. For those of you who are really curious, um, I haven't seen uh, anybody put out a video yet on what a real dry kiln looks on the inside other than, you know, the guys that are, you know, show the, uh, the home style, uh, you know, with foils and that kind of stuff. They work too, but uh, this is something, this is an industrial type. So anyway, um, we'll take a walk on outside. So here's a one of the main fans. Up here you got your heating coils. You can't quite see them through this light here. Let's see if we can get some lights up here. There's the heating coils. Now these fans pull the air through the unit and this wall is designed left and right to guide the air over the top in a counterclockwise motion through the stack of lumber back into the fan. And here's the tracks that lead outside. Now up here you have an exhaust port which allows the uh, laden, the moisture laden air out. And over here we have an inlet that pulls the uh, fresh air into the kiln and uh, thereby lowering the relative humidity. <clears throat> Here's a charge ready to go in. Now the charge is never higher than the door here, of course. And there is, you can't really see this. Let me see if I can. Okay, there's room above. As I said before, the air circulates over top of the unit, comes down and is, and is uh, fed into the stack and then back into the fan. And the cycle continues until the wood is dry. So, Well, as you may have noticed, uh, looking through the dry kiln, you noticed that the, the walls were covered in like asphalt. And the reason being for that is uh, when the wood first goes into the dry kiln, you know, it's wet and uh, you, you, you put in a lot of steam in order to open up the pores in some woods and then also to create uh, an equalization effect where the outside of the board is as wet as the inside and that way the water as it escapes the, the wood 
uh, will come out a little easier as the uh, the uh, relative humidity is lowered and the drying process is advanced. So uh, the reason for the asphalt again too is uh, also for corrosion uh, and uh, you know modern day, day dry kilns for example are uh, clad in aluminum a lot of them inside for the uh, anti-oxidation uh, um, per, uh, properties of, of aluminum. So the asphalt was put in there a long time ago as a, and you still see this in modern kilns too where uh, some are, are asphalted. Um, the volatile organic compounds, the VOCs in the wood will attack the, uh, the interior of the kiln and eventually eat it up and uh, deteriorate it to the point where they're no longer usable. Uh, steel will rust away within a matter of two to three years. Uh, aluminum will eventually fade away too, but it takes a lot longer. It'll, it can take up to 30 or 40 years for a, a, a aluminum clad dry kiln interior to deteriorate to the point where it's no longer usable. So that's the reason for that. And the one thing I didn't show also was the uh, drain sump in the in between the tracks. Um, again, um, it has to do with the condensation uh, and you know the the initial moisture uh, peak that uh, occurs when the wood is when the charge is put into the kiln. And then also um, in the winter time, if the charge is covered with snow um, and it drips and melts off, and it ha the water has a place to go. Um, when the relative humidity is high and there's enough of a tem temperature differential to the walls, you'll get condensation forming and it can be voluminous at times and so you got to have a place for the water to go. So that's the need for the drain in the bottom of the, of the kiln that I didn't show. But anyway, the, the, build, the setup of the kiln hasn't changed much um, since you know, ever I can remember, the only thing that has improved is, you know, efficiency of fans and heating and insulation and that sort of thing, individual component. Uh, but the overall setup of the things has remained pretty constant over the last probably 100 years or so, maybe mo maybe longer. Uh, hard to say. If anybody's got a better idea how long these been like that, you know, let, them, let us know. Anyway, hope you guys uh, enjoyed today's episode of Random Lengths and uh, hope to see you again soon. Uh, for uh, those of you who've got anything to contribute to this, by all means leave a comment in the comment section below. I'm always glad to hear from you. And uh, for those of you who give me a thumbs down, um, if there's something about the, the videos you don't like, by all means let me know. Um, I'm always looking to improve and if I'm just getting a thumbs down, I don't know what it is that uh, might need improving uh, to suit you know, the, the overall viewing pleasure of the video a little better. So by all means, leave a comment in the comment section below and we'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.